we've come a very long way in the ability to process enough data to make machine learning and AI a powerful tool. We're interested in machines that can learn, machines that can do tasks faster than human beings. Machines that have what we recognize as cognitive abilities. Robots and AI are no longer just far-fetched ideas. They definitely exist in our everyday lives. So how can this tech really serve to make us more efficient and make our lives better? AI and machine learning is the application of algorithms that allow us to build predictive capability. It's the ability to look at massive data sets where a system can actually learn from itself. AI is already being used in some of the things that we interact with every day. We use it in transacting business, we use it in trading mechanisms. People don't realize it's there. If you use Google search, that's AI. When you use an iPhone that recognizes your face so that you can sign on, that's AI. Warby Parker built its business helping people find the right glasses that look great on their face. And we felt like, how could we find uh, a technology that would help people find the right fit when they're not in the store? When we found that the iPhone 10 was going to have a camera that could do depth sensing, we took that same technology of being able to read the detailed contours of your face, and then we have a big data set of frames that people have purchased that have similar face contours. So we're able to make recommendations based on that big data set. The way that we think about AI is we have customer needs and how can we connect those with tools that better enable our customers to get the experience they're looking for. Most AI has this feature where the more data that you can aggregate and learn from, the more likely you are to give more precise, more satisfying results in the future. So over time, we're more likely to get a subset of frames that are gonna be great for you. So there are many different forms of machine learning out there today. We see companies today building systems that can monitor your heartbeat and through deep learning anticipate uh, heart problems far earlier than before. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a common misconception that anything that's cool on a robot is AI. The reality is there's no AI on most robots running in the wild. And that's where the challenge lies, and that's what we're studying right now. So the primary mission statement of CAST, the Center for Autonomous Systems and Technology here at Caltech, is to bring together mind and body. We have AI and machine learning researchers with robotics researchers coming together so that we can integrate machine learning and the robotics and control in a seamless, easy to use way. So this is Cassie. This is a full three-dimensional walking robot. What this is meant to be is a test bed for new algorithms. Right now, it comes with this very impressive but singular behavior. So it can walk at different speeds and in different directions. But it can't go up and down stairs, walk in sand and dirt and mud. And it's not for lack of capability. It's for lack of sort of mathematics. So the idea is we want to develop a mathematical framework that combines robotics with machine learning to have it learn how to walk on different terrain types. Whoa, yeah, all right. We've successfully realized our algorithms on custom-built prosthetics for paraplegics. So really what we're trying to do here is help people walk better and ultimately live better lives because of this knowledge. We are training the AI systems, we are training the robots, and down the line, uh, we'll see a richer collaboration where robots can interact with humans in a more seamless way. Hello, I'm Pepper. I'm a humanoid robot. Pepper's a four foot tall humanoid robot uh, designed primarily to engage with you. Pepper can greet you, can tell you where the restroom is, can give you uh, wayfinding, send the map to your phone. I think one of the advantages that robots brings to the world is the ability to automate some low-level tasks that are inherent within our days. So you know, when we think about putting robots into businesses, we're thinking about how do we help them take the, the number of workers they have and help those people deliver on their work in a better, easier, more productive way. We're finding that anywhere where you can interact with people is a good place to put Pepper. So retail hospitality, 
banking, and then education and healthcare also have some great use cases. What we learn from having Pepper in the wild, if you will, is how well does robotics really do with people? If it's meant to be a robot that's integrating with people and interacting with people, then the form factor really plays a key role in that, in that symbiotic relationship. We don't want anyone to say, oh, that's a robot. Right? We want to say, oh, that's Pepper. Have you seen my Instagram? From a technical achievement in artificial intelligence and robotics in general, we've come a long way. But from a consumer uh, point of view, yeah, we got a lot more to do. I would invite more artists to take part in robotics. That's what's needed. That's the next level. Artists and designers know how to make things that really enrich the human experience. You know, the best robots today are still in Star Wars. And no one thinks of R2-D2 as anything but R2-D2. You insist that he's actually saying something when he's beeping and blooping and all that. I think we need that in order to have these technologies be accepted in a way that really amplifies and enriches our lives. The future is full of opportunity for us. We need to lead in and embrace it. AI is at that cusp of breakthrough where we can actually use it as consumers and in the enterprise, it's fantastic. Fundamentally, process is the lifeblood of every single organization. More and more, what we're going to see is robotics process automation in the cloud. So any process that has the hallmarks of being structured, repetitive, and high volume, for example, finance and HR systems, we will be able to replace the execution of those activities uh, with robots. It will be behind the scenes much more often. It's really going to be where artificial intelligence starts automating certain capabilities and elements of processes in the corporation. The AI environment will come in and take some jobs. Robotics will come in and take over some more tasks. But what we'll do is focus our attention on the things they can't do. We can go concentrate on something else that's a different value. There's still a huge demand for designers and people to create the right kind of efficiencies. Robotics will create more jobs and take jobs. In car manufacturing, robotics helped the car industry where people learned a new skill, mastering the robotic tools that were helping them on the assembly lines. What we're really talking about is a digital workforce and a human workforce working together in tandem. And so the future is actually a hybrid one where the two coexist and work together to create value. The combination of machine and, and human capabilities will offer us decisive advantages over either on their own. As AI and machine learning get smarter, as we jump into a car with much more intelligence, as we go into a city that has services available, we should expect that we are going to get augmented and extended. We're going to be smarter, we're going to be better, we're going to be faster. <laughs>